we're in the point where Noah has got off on the ark, got off on the ark, and he makes his first offering. And he offers what? What does he offer? Do you remember what he offers for an offering, for a burnt offering? Remember, they're, they're offering all of this burnt offering. These are complete burnt offerings, okay? Whole burnt offerings. Sharon? The clean animals. All of the clean animals. So all of the clean animals he made an offering of. So what were the clean animals that we know about? Well, Goats, goat, sheep, sheep cows, and the birds that were the clean animals. So he made all of the offerings of these clean animals. It wasn't just one. And how many uh, pairs of clean animals did he take on, the birds and the, and the animals? Seven pairs. And what would he offer? What, what, what gender of, of these animals were offered? Male. The males. Okay, the males were offered. Okay. Why did God offer the male animals only, except for the red heifer offering and stuff like that? Why did he offer Adam. the what? Adam, the first no. male. No. Why did he offer these animals in the male gender? It's a type of, Christ. It's a type of Jesus. Jesus is male, all right? Jesus, they're all a type of Christ, the type of Jesus. And, that, and of course, to be a type of Jesus, they would have to be the males on them. Right now, in Hebrews the sixth chapter, we were talking this morning about uh, the Gentile church that was prophesied here in the ninth chapter of the book of Genesis. It prophesied that the church would go to a Gentile, would finally evolve from Shem to Japheth, and Japheth was carry the gospel. We have the prophecy of the Gentile church, but. We see in that that Israel's going to come along. Israel had a chance to be the bride of God. Israel became a prostitute, a wavered woman, and so God divorced her. And But through Israel would come the Messiah, the one Messiah, the Messiah through the one woman that would be faithful, counted as faithful Israel, that was Mary. And she would have this child, and he would be the king, even though he wasn't on the throne. His throne had been uh, uh, stolen from him by the Herod line. And he would come onto the, on the scene. He would go in. He would take over his kingdom. Israel would reject him. And God would reject Israel. And God will never put Israel back in the place of the bride. Matter of fact, during the wedding feast, now this is jumping a little bit ahead here. We're talking about the offerings and what the offerings stood for. During the wedding feast, where is Israel? During the wedding feast, during the wedding, the marriage ceremony, and the wedding uh, festival, where are the Jews on earth. on earth we have the rapture I believe the rapture now there's three different views of the rapture there's what we call the pre-tribulation rapture there's a mid-tribulation rapture and then there's what they call split raptures and then there's the post-tribulation rapture I believe in the pre-tribulation rapture here at the end of the church age because it teaches that we have two people in the Bible that are a type of the rapture who are they who are the two people of the type of the rapture? Enoch. Enoch and Elijah. Okay, they were raptured. Without death, they were taken up. Okay? Now, here, the reason for the tribulation period is what? What's the reason for the tribulation period? Bring Israel back together. To bring Israel back to God and to, and to punish the nations for what they have done. The rebelliousness. So... God is going to bring Israel back to God and he's going to punish the nation in the meanwhile of how they have treated Israel and treated God's name. Now, up here in New Jerusalem, above the earth, above up there, is a wedding feast taking place. Now, this period of time is called Daniel's what? 
Daniel's week. How long was a wedding feast in the Bible? One week. We have a feast of years, a week of years during this period of time right here. All the time down here on the earth, the first three and a half years, we find somewhat of a semblance of peace. I forgot to bring my book here today. I had a, well, a pamphlet, a readout that I had, co that I had downloaded from the Islamic website telling what they are looking for in the end times. They're looking for the Mahdi to come, the Mahdi. He's going to come. He is not Jesus, they say. He is not Jesus. They keep putting, he is not Jesus. He is not Jesus. The Bible teaches that Jesus is coming back for his people, and then he's going to come back and save the Jews during this period of time. He's going to come back and save the Jews. But all during this time, this wedding feast, which Israel could have had as her, her husband, her groom, they, are, they have rejected him, and they will never be the bride again. Israel will never be the bride. They will be guests in the bride's house, but they will never be the bride. All of that period of time here, the Lord is up here with his, with his bride. And there's going to be a lot of saved people. There's going to be a lot of guests at the wedding. I think that some of these people that are killed during this time will go poof and be up there with the Lord. That's the ones that are, you know, the souls that are crying out to God. I believe during that period of time that these, uh, these people that are living during that period of time, a martyr's death will be very special. Now, I think that we'll have a martyr's reward, but that martyr's reward is not being the bride. That martyr's reward is not being the bride. Hello, Brother Abe. The martyrs, were, these people will be with the Lord, and they'll be crying for revenge and justice that's down on the earth. And all this time, the Lord is with his bride. Okay? Now, I think he's going to take a few minutes off to come down here and whoop the Antichrist right here in the middle and protect Israel. And then at the end, guess what he's going to do? He's going to bring his... Saints with him on white horses at the end. And I think they will be there for witnesses. In the Bible, in the book of Revelation, we have the false prophet, the beast, and the Antichrist. Islamic scholars believe, the Islamic, converted Islamic scholars believe, that the Mahdi is the Antichrist. There is a Jesus that's coming back. But the Mahdi will bring all of this in and that uh, the, uh, the Jesus of Muslim world will kill the Jews and then he will kill the Christians. It said he will break the cross. He will break all religions and he will kill all of these people and then he will kill all the swine. Why does he want to kill the swine? Do you know, brother, do you know why he's wanting to kill the swine? Why they hate the swine? Because some of the Jews were turned into swine. And the Jews were turned into swine, and some of the Jews were turned into monkeys. So they don't like monkeys either. Because a lot of the monkeys are really Jews to turn into monkeys. Now this sounds really ridiculous, but this is their theology. They believe this, okay? They really believe this. So we have the Mahdi, we have the beast, and we have the false Jesus, that the Jesus, their Jesus is going to kill the Jews and kill the Christians. Now the Bible says that there will be an antichrist and the antichrist will come in and he will bring the whole world under now according to the uh, Islam it's going to be the Mahdi that does this okay the Mahdi is going to come in and bring and he's going to break all the all of the kings of the earth and bring them under his control and there will be only one religion in the world the world is looking for what kind of one world religion how many people are trying even the Pope is trying to be uh, uh, acceptable to Islam in me. They're brothers in their religious beliefs. This is going to happen in the end time. I don't know what all is going to happen, but Islam, they want to bring this caliphate back. The caliphate was done away with in 1920-something. It was that done. But it's going to come back again. They're looking for the Mahdi to come back and, and turn the world back into this caliphate, okay? 
this body is going to do this, and then the beast is going to come out of Mecca, and they're going to take that black stone of Mecca and take it to Jerusalem. And they're going to worship God in Jerusalem. And they're going to build a temple in Jerusalem, and they're going to put this black stone in there, and this is going to be a temple for everybody. And the Jews are looking, I had a thing up there, the Jews are looking for donations to build the temple. This temple is the Antichrist temple that they're going to build. Do you realize that? All of their things that they have, you know, they're going to, and they're going to make, how long is the Mahdi going to rule, according to Islam? Seven years. Seven years. He's going to bring in the beast. The Mahdi is going to bring in the beast, which is going to mark all of those people with the number of the or the name of the the Antichrist, which Islam says it's going to be. There is no god but Allah, and He has no companion, and Muhammad is His prophet. Now they say that's what it is. We have three coming to the earth. What's the number of the Antichrist, brother Abe? What's the number of the Antichrist? 666. What does 6 stand for? Man, man, man. Will that be a trinity of mankind there? Will it be a trinity of mankind? Now this is what, I'm not saying this is what I believe, this is what they say they're going to do. This is what Islam says they're going to do. Okay? So as we look forward from the book of Genesis, we're going to see all of the nations, the table of nations come out, and we're going to look at what those nations did but the culmination of all of this comes down through here and it's all through Noah's three sons true all of the history of humankind has come through Noah's three sons so we have all this period of time and Israel is going to be on the earth Israel will because of the promise God gave to Abraham Israel will be the administrator of God's kingdom on the earth what is a conditional covenant? Brother Floyd, do you, you know? Conditional covenant? A conditional covenant. What God does, it doesn't depend on anything man does. No. A conditional no, covenant. The opposite, That's the opposite of that. There are conditions to the covenant. The conditions to the covenant for, land, for Israel to be in the land was what? They would worship the God and him only. Did they ever do that? No. Have they done it yet? No. They don't have legal rights to the land today because they haven't done that. Okay? They can say all they want to with the Abrahamic promise. The Abrahamic promise, them possessing that land, had conditions to it. The Abrahamic promise naming Israel that he would rule through them was an unconditional covenant. That's a Davidic covenant. Okay? And that's what's going to happen down on this earth for 1,000 years. Okay, is this interesting to you? All right, that's going to happen here. And it's a, that is part of an unconditional covenant. The conditional covenant is Israel to have possession of the land. They must worship the Lord and him only. And they crucified him. And they said, let his blood be upon us and our children. So it has been. Will Israel ever have the land back? Yes. No. Not until they what? Worship him. And then when they say, when he says, when you say, blessed and holy, say he that came in the name of the Lord, I will come back and save you. And that happens during this last period of time. And finally, he will usher in his kingdom for 1,000 years. Ezekiel 36, 25 through 38. They were dispersed, Ezekiel 36 to 16 through 19. They were being regathered today, today Ezekiel 36, 20 through 24. And they will have the kingdom because of the unconditional covenant with Abraham and the Davidic covenant for this 1,000 years, Ezekiel 36, 25 through 38. Now, this just looks like one chapter, doesn't it? But it's broken up in three phases of that chapter, of Israel's whole history. Now let's go back to the book of Genesis and yeah. let's go from here. You said they'll never have the land. Not as they are today. But they will have, they have to repent. That's what I said. They will, have to they will national Israel is going to be destroyed in this present tense. They will be run out of the land completely. They will be run out of the land, and then God will bring them back, and he will put them in the land. But that's when they have a new heart, 
and they haven't got a new heart yet. Have they? Have they? No. No. Basically, Israel today is run by the Sadducees, the atheists, okay, the atheist type people. They were the rich and powerful people. They were the Sadducees, the Pharisees, and the Herodians. The Herodians are out of the picture, <laughs> except you might say that the Edomites are the, the Muslims, because they're still there. All right, 821. Why Yaru Roch? Hadavar, Et, Reach, Hani, Chaak, Wyomer, Hadavar, El, Lebo, Lo, Osef, Li, Kalel, Od, Et, Hadama, Ki, Yetzer, Lev, Hadam, Ra, Men, Ni ru ro. We lo. Osef. Od. Li hak kof. Chai koleth. Ka ashur. Asithi. And that's it. Long verse. Now look at this word here. Y ya ruach. That word there has breath in it, doesn't it? Does it not? It's got wind or breath. And it's third person, master, singular, hif, el, wow, consecutive, imperfect. He had breathed for himself Jehovah. He had smelled or breathed for himself and kept on breathing and smelling for himself air, smell, wind. The odor. Look at that word, et, odor, et, odor, ruah, the odor, okay, the scent, the wind, the breath, again, the breath, uh, delight, hani, chaach. Now, what was this, this breath, this wind that he was breathing? Not so much the smoke. What is it? What is it? Let's look at it deep now. Let's go deep. I want you to go real deep. What made up the offerings? What made up these offerings? Sweet savor. What? The smell. The smell. The sweet savor. Smell. No. Brother Abe, what made up these offerings? What made up these offerings? What entailed the offerings? What were the offerings? Sharon. The clean animals. And animals have bodies. They have souls and they have spirits, don't they? What ascended to the Lord? Soul and spirit. The spirits. Their bodies were burned, yes. But what represented the... What did these offerings represent? They represented death. They represented the cross of Jesus Christ. That's what they represented. Jesus dying on the cross. He said, he said, Father, unto you I deposit my spirit. Did he not? I deposit my spirit. Now these animals, when they cut their throats, that's what they did. They cut their throats. When they cut their throats, and that blood was spilled out on the ground, which represented the blood of Christ, and their spirits ascended back to God who gave them, Okay. That spirit, that breath, their lives, their spirits, when their when those little lives died, all of those lives died, God was satisfied. It wasn't so much the smoke, but it was the life. The entity of life that satisfied. They died. What did they represent? According to Hebrews, the sixth chapter. It, those animals represented Jesus Christ. For a Jew to kill another animal after Jesus Christ died on the cross is blasphemy. Those Jews have got all of the articles of sacrifice and everything ready to go in and make sacrifices in that temple. And every time they make a sacrifice, it will be blasphemy. 
Because why? What does the Hebrews the sixth chapter tell us? Let's go there and look. Right. Hebrews the sixth chapter. This is something that uh, Hebrews chapter six. <clears throat> Let's start reading this. You put it together. Therefore, leaving the elementary teaching about Christ, let us press on to maturity, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, instruction about washings and laying on of hands and the resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment. And this we shall do if God permits. Now, we're talking about preaching the gospel there. For in the case that those who have been enlightened, they had light in their hearts. They had light in their heads and have tasted of the heavenly gift and have been made partakers of the Holy Spirit. All right? There is a lot of problems with Judaism in there, Judaizers and Judaism. Jesus had a lot of problems with it when he's there. And then the church is going to have problems with the Judaizers in the church, Judaism without Judaizers in the church. A lot of people use this to say that you can lose your salvation. This is not what it's talking about it at all. This is talking about crucifying Christ every time they make an offering. Let's see what it says. Made partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come. The, spirit, the miracles that were performed and the miracles that were confirming the word of God of the age to come. And then have fallen away. It is impossible to renew them to repentance since they again crucify. What do they do when they go out and make these offerings? They crucify Christ again. Every time they make offering, they're crucifying Christ because those offerings represented who? The birds. All of these animals were typified Christ. The innocent doves. Jesus was innocent. He was not guilty. The goats, the sheep, they were innocent. Led as a sheep to slaughter. That little sheep that's going along because he thinks you love him and you get him up there, confess your sins on his head and he thinks you're petting him. And then you slice his juggler vein. And he dies. And his spirit goes away. And his eyes grow dead. That is when the sacrifice, not so much on the altar, but when the animal spirit ascended, that animal paid the ultimate cost. Jesus paid the ultimate cost for us. And then fallen away, impossible to renew, to repentance, since they again crucified to themselves the Son of God and put him to open shame. These things represented him. We don't go back to the shadow and worship the shadow. We worship the Son, not the shadow, not his Son. For the ground drinks the rain that falls upon it and brings forth vegetation useful to those whose sake it is tilled themselves, a blessing from God. Talks about the natural things. The natural thing. Let's go back now to the book of Genesis where we're talking about soteriology. We're talking about kafar, the forgiveness, the atonement. And 1 John 2 and 2 says what? 1 John 2 and 2 says what? Look at that real quick. They're talking about a hilosmos. That is an Old Testament term in 1 John 2 and 2. Even John Calvin had that one right. Let's look at it real quick. 1 John 2 and 2. Verse 1 says, My little children, I am writing these things to you that you might not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. And he himself is a helosmos, helosterion is what it literally says, a kafar, a covering, the atonement for our sins, and not for ours only, but for those of the whole world. Is the atonement limited? Do we have a limited atonement here? No. no. Tulip. Total hereditary depravity, unconditional election, limited atonement, irresistible grace, and preservation of the saints. Limited atonement is just X out right here. Jesus Christ died for all mankind's sins. Amen. Throughout the Old Testament, those animals died, all representing Jesus. Right here. Look at it one more time in the light and the 
And he himself is the atonement for our sins, and not for ours only, but for those of the whole world. Not a, that atonement is not efficacious. It's sufficient for all mankind, but it's efficacious, all efficacious only to those that believe. It's limited in that sense. But it's not limited. He didn't die just for the elect. Your supralapsarian says he died only for the elect. That's not what that says there. Even John Calvin says that it was an open door that all mankind could have hope in his later writings. He wasn't quite as hyper Calvinist in his later life as he was in the early life. We all change. His theology evolves. And he smelled, he breathed Jehovah the breath. The breaths. And we have a delight here. Ha ni chaak. Soothing delight. And he said and kept on saying Jehovah unto his heart. Look at that. Unto his heart. In the depths of God's love. Not will I continue to curse. Look at that word. La kalel. Come from kalel. Not will I continue to curse. That word is infinitive construct PL. Not will I continue to intensely cur curse still the ground as account of the mankind. Because, yes, sir, for the purpose of shaping his heart of mankind is evil mankind forms and shapes his heart to evil always doesn't he is that what is our nature even when on the best day have you ever had a real good day that you thought that you were just following the Lord and you were just happy and then all of these creepy things come in your mind do they ever does that ever happen the creepy things creep in yeah even when you're Doing it, and you think that absolutely, boy, I am flying straight today. I'm straight arrow. Straight arrow. Straight arrow. And then all of a sudden, it creeps on you. And you realize that you've got this problem. The hearts and desires that are forming in the heart of mankind are always evil. Raw. Look at that raw. What does that raw mean? Remember what that one means? That's on page 948. In this year, this year book, Brown Driver and Briggs, 948. I almost got there. I'm used to opening this thing. <clears throat> 948. I was a lot closer there than what I thought I was. I couldn't see straight. 948. Bad evil. Malignant, disagreeable, <clears throat> unpleasing, poisonous, contaminating, malignant, rotten, <laughs> rotten, rotten and rotting, uh, unclean. Unhappiness, misery, unpleasantness, evil, crooked, lying, corruption, instruments of evil, harmful. That's uh, quite descriptive, isn't it? Everything in man's heart is evil. Because of the purpose of evil. From his mene uh, yura, from, uh, from his beginning, from his conception. You know that a baby is sinning in his mother's womb? You think about that? Think about that for just a minute. When he grows out, when he comes from his mother's womb, why is he able to sin in his mother's womb? 
because he's got the infection of Adam in him, doesn't he? Not from the woman, but from the man. It's our fault. And not will I continue or keep on, I shall keep on still to smite. Look at that word to smite. Li hak koth. To smite. It's an infinitive construct, hifel. Et kal kai chai. All living things because of mankind. You know, mankind got the whole world killed. According as I have done. First person construct, singular, cal perfect. 8.22, now the last verse in the 8th chapter. Ode, kal yeme, ha'aritz zera, ki there. We car we we comb we kayitz wa charef we yom walaila walaya but wa lai ha that is lo <coughs> Yishbotu. Still, all days of the earth, seed and harvest. Now, God is setting all the seasons now. The earth has changed. The earth has changed. Now, before we have the flood, we have a greenhouse, don't we? The earth is in a greenhouse. Now the earth is going to have four seasons. What's four seasons? What are the four seasons? Brother Abe, what are the four seasons, you know? Four seasons. What are they? Spring, Spring summer, fall, winter. There's a time for planting. There's a time for harvesting. You know what? In the garden, when they were there, in, in this Pangea that existed before the earth, when it was covered with all around, it was a continual growing season. A continual growing season. It was like in a, in a hothouse or a, a greenhouse. In a greenhouse, can you grow vegetables in the wintertime? Yes. Yeah. Is there a growing season in a greenhouse? Not really. It's one continuous growing season and one continuous basically harvest, se harvest season on something. How many of you have pepper plants? If you put them in a greenhouse, what do they continue to do? Continue to, to produce and produce and produce and produce. They almost become a tree. Many plants are like that, bell peppers. Now corn and stuff like that, it grows up and it, and it dies off and you get, harvest the corn and stuff like that. But the peppers and the tomatoes and things like this, it just they just keep on growing, just keep on growing, keep on growing. These plants down in the in the earth at that time now, was there tomatoes there? No. How about potatoes? No. Peanuts? No. Not yet. Who developed those? Those Hamites. Those Indians developed those later on. These were not things that were there, but they had plants there, did they? Did they not? They had plants. We don't know what they were. Probably <laughs> at this period of time, where did the tomato plants come from? Where did they come from? Where did they originate? Where did tomato plants originate, Brother uh, Abe? Belladonna, the deadly nightshade plant, the nightshade plant. That's what they were. All tomatoes at one time before the Indians genetically developed them were that purple little thing on there. And you can get purple to tomatoes, all different kinds. You can get white tomatoes, all kinds of stuff, orange tomatoes, all kinds of stuff that they have developed from this. But they came from the nightshade. And then you have your root plants, like potatoes and peanuts and everything. They were developed also. But here we have plants and it was a continuous harvest season all the time but now it changes a fig tree a fig tree produced two or three or four crops in a year why did Jesus curse that fig tree when it had leaves on it because when he's got leaves on it's got fruit on it both do 
What were some of the things that were in the garden? Figs. What an, what's another plant that goes all the way back? Another plant. Pomegranates. These are old, old things. Old, old. Okay, let's go on. Still all the days of the earth, seed and harvest, and cold and heat. We have cold and heat. Right now we're in the fall of the year, and I am thankful for that. Even though it keeps on acting like it's winter, it's 80-something degrees today. Almost in November, 80-something degrees in Bakersfield. Why do they call it Bakersfield? Thomas Baker? Yeah, but you feel like you're in a baker's oven all summer long and heat and summer and winter and day and night not day shall cease so now God sets about the seasons this is when God set the season this is when the seasons began right here right now after the flood 9 and verse 1 9 and verse 1 <coughs> Ninth chapter. Why Varek? Elohim. Et Noah. We et. Bano. Wyomer. Lahem Peru. Urevu. U Melu. Et Haaretz. Now let's look and see what this was. Why Varek? What is the root of this word? What's the root of this word? Can anybody read that? Brother Abe, what's the root of this word? Why, why Varek? What's the root of this word? Do you know what the root is? Huh? It's down there. Barak. Barak. Thank you very much. Barak means to bless. Okay. Now let's look at this. It's a third person masculine singular. Third person masculine singular. What's that? He, all right? It's PL stem. What does that PL stem tell us? PL stem. Intensity. Intensely with violence and intensely. And then it's while consecutive and perfect. What does that tell us? It means it's, 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 it's a continuous thing. And he blessed intensely and kept on blessing God at Noah. F there is just simply the sign of the direct object. You can put down page 81 underneath that sign of direct object there. Noah. <coughs> Noah. What's Noah mean? Noah. Brother Abe, what's the name for Noah in Korean? Noah. Noah? Still Noah, huh? All right. Noah. They have a story of Noah in Korea, don't they? They had the legend of the flood in Korea. All all people have the legend of Noah. But it's not really just a legend, is it? It's a historical fact. It really happened. It really happened. Noah means peace and safety. And in Noah, in that ark, was peace and safety. And we et, and sign a direct object, his sons. He intensely blessed Noah and his sons. And he said and kept on saying, third person, my and senior, cow, wow, consecutive, and perfect. Lehem, to them. We have a preposition and a third person pronoun, don't we? To them. Now we have masculine, plural, cow, imperative. What's that mean? A masculine, plural. That's the men. Cow, imperative. It's a command. Be fruitful. Men, be fruitful. Be fruitful. Mankind, be fruitful. You, Revu. And, uh, masculine, plural, cow, imperative, be, multiply, increase, rava, increase. And, uh, you, Milu, you on the front of that, that's a conjunction, and then Milu. Milu comes from Mele. Mam, Lamet, and Alif is a root. See that down there? And it's masculine, plural, cal imperative. 
keep on filling up. Keep on filling up. Et ha'aretz. Keep on filling up the earth. Fill it back up. Had the earth been depopulated? Yeah. How many millions of people were on the earth at that time when God destroyed? A lot of people were on there. A lot of people were on the earth at that period of time. The earth was over a thousand years old with mankind on it. I mean, the earth is, who knows how old the earth is. But the mankind on the earth was there for more than a thousand years, wasn't he? Adam, through Noah, was a long period of time. One man lived the biggest part of that time. Who was he? Methuselah. He lived almost a thousand years, 969 years. So we have a long period of time here when the flood came on the earth and the earth had, just think about that. The earth was continuously producing life. Producing life, producing life, producing life. And the earth, but there were bad things going on in the earth, wasn't it? We have Cain's people killing people. They're killing people. They're killing animals. They're killing people. They're not allowed to do that, but they're doing it. We have the Nephilim, sixth chapter. We have the Nephilim. We have angels and, and women procreating, and we have a race of giants that are killing and destroying God's earth. And every time that an angel procreates with one of God's creation, he is what? Blaspheming in God, and he is tainting his creation. So because of all this, God destroyed it. And mankind was very evil. 9 and verse 2. You, Mo-Ra-Kem, we cha ti him ye ye al chayakal chayoth haaretz we all call of Hashemayim, le call asher tir tir mosh tir mosh hadama you we call Degay, Hayom, Be Yet Kayam, Netanu. That starts out with you there. That's a conjunction on the front of that word. And uh, and fear. Here is when the animals began to fear man. They never feared man before. The animals were man's companions. But now mankind is killing animals. And mankind is going to eat animals. And so animals will have the fear of self-preservation. Okay? The fear of self-preservation. I told a little story this morning about my family. Uh, Willie Paul was my great-grandmother's brother. And uh, some of you weren't here. Well, almost, uh, Sharon's the only one who was here. Willie Paul, after he got married, he went in partners with this rancher, and they moved out to this ranch. And they had a house out there, and, and Willie went in partners with him, and he had married uh, uh, Victoria Rosser. Victoria Rosser. Victoria Rosser was from uh, Georgia. Her family was from Georgia, and they were southern aristocrats. They had to flee after the, 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 what we call the war between the states, our civil war, because they were killing all of them. Well, Mr. Rosser, when one of the carpetbaggers came in there, he, uh, was, he was talking to the Negroes, the former slaves, and trying to tell them, don't vote for these guys because they're going to cut all of our throats. And, and we won't have an economy here that will be worth a flip and it will be all upside down. Vote this out because now they had the chance to vote there in that local area. Well, the carpetbagger came up there and accosted him, and he busted him so hard that he fell down, and we don't know whether they killed him or not, but they took off and left and went to Alabama. And then he just kept moving, and then Sam Paul came to, India, came to these white people and settlers and said, come in the, into Paul's Valley, and we will, 
we, we'll open up the land and you can lease the land from the Indian tribes and you can build their homes and ranches and things there for only a few dollars a year for, per acre. And we'll get money and you'll get money. And that worked real good. Well, one of these white guys went in partners with his son, Willie Paul, which was my uncle. Well, Willie's wife didn't have any babies yet, even though she was pregnant, Victoria was, and she was from these aristocratic family, and she really liked to put on fine clothes and, and go to parties and things, because this is the way they were ran. The people in the South were raised like the queens and kings of, Egypt, of, of England and Europe, because that's where they had come from. And they were French, and so they were like French aristocrats. So they come in here, and she's very lonely out there in the hills and everything, and she had nothing, and this woman had a bunch of kids to take care of, and she had no time to be friends with her like she could. So Willie went out, and he found a baby raccoon and brought it home, and, uh, and she bottle-fed it and raised it up, and she just loved this little raccoon, and she named him Jim. His name was Jim. And uh, he would, just, raccoons have hands just like people, you know. The little raccoon would get in the closets and get into the, take everything out of the drawers, out of the kitchen, and put them out on the ground and play with them like a little kid and stuff like that. And she just loved this raccoon. And the raccoon loved her, and he'd follow her around, and he'd get around on her shoulders, and she'd go around the ranch with him out there. And then her husband would come and get her on the, uh, her horse, and she'd ride side to saddle like a lady would in the south. And little Jim would be on her shoulder, and all of the ranchers would be laughing about this girl with this pet raccoon. To them, it's food, you know. This is an animal you kill. Well, it went on and on, and finally Jim started going out the window in the, and looking around outside and getting into things, but he'd always come back and get in his box. A lot of times she'd wake up, and then everything out of her closets in the bedroom would be out in the middle of the floor, and Jim would be laying on all of her clothes because he loved her so much. He'd be laying there on her clothes. Have you ever had your dog lay on your coat or something? That's the way he'd do. Finally, he went out and didn't come home. And Willie came home and said, well, you know, probably he just found Mrs. Jim, and now they're gone. But what really happened, she really found out, that the cowboys, see, Jim was tame. He had no fear of mankind. So they just took him and cut his little throat and skinned him and put him on a spit and barbecued him and laughed about it because they had no care, no love for this little animal that was a pet. The girl, it broke her heart, and she never felt good toward these people ever again. Now God puts the fear of animals. That little raccoon, Jim, didn't have any fear of people because he had nothing to fear. They were his friends and his companions and playmates. And all these animals were Adam's playmates. But now they're not playmates anymore. Now they're food. And so now God's going to put fear in them. And fear of you and terror. Look at that terror. Terror. It shall become, third person masculine singular, cal and perfect, it shall keep on becoming upon every beast, every beast of the earth. <clears throat> now, let me tell you this. Domestic animals that go wild, domestic animals that go wild like dogs are very dangerous. I remember back in the 70s. The 70s, wasn't it, Brother Floyd? Uh, 60s and 70s? Back up in, the, uh, in Johnsondale and all back up in the woods up there, Glenville and all that stuff, it was very dangerous to go out there in the woods without a gun because there was wild packs of feral dogs that would attack animals and they would eat people. You lost a little girl up there in Johnsondale, didn't you? Yeah, there's a little family camping on the river. Uh, wh what? Camp family camping on the river, and the dogs kill the little girl. Yeah. They will kill you and eat you because you are food. And when you're up there, and I was up there one time during that period of time, and I came upon a pack of wild dogs. They're not afraid of you, but dogs are smart. If you're carrying a weapon, then they have terror and they have fear. My dog came up, my little poncho, my little chihuahua. I took him every place with me. We had him for 30 years. 
Anyway, he came up there, and he was scared, and he's never afraid of anything. I said, Poncho, what are you doing? I picked him up, you know, and he was just trembling all over. And I looked up, and I saw this big pack of wild dogs, pit bulls and German shepherds and all kinds of dogs. Always I carried a gun with me. All the time I had a gun on my person. But that day I was crawling around and I left my Colt Python in the car, in the pickup. And it was up there about 25 yards away. And so I'll, I took my dog and I walked looking those animals all the way up there. And they were just looking at me like there's food, there's food, two pieces of food. He's carrying one, you know. I got up there and I opened the door and I pulled that gun out. When they saw that gun, they took off. I was no longer food. Now the terror was in them because they knew that I was now a predator like they were. So mankind has become a predator and God puts the fear of animals in animals of mankind. And it shall become upon all beasts of the earth and upon every fowl Birds, wing flappers will now be afraid of you, of the heavens, and with all which creeps, she creeps and keeps on creeping. Third person, feminine, singular, cal, imperfect, termos. She keeps on creeping upon the ground, and with all the fish, all the swimmers, and uh, of the sea, of the waters, and to your hand. They are given. Natan. They are given. They are all given to you for food. Now, things have totally changed, haven't they? Things have totally changed. The whole economy of the earth, we have seasons, and now we have the fear of the animals. Fear of the animals. I've had... Uh, you know, I'm an Indian, I've said that many, many times, but Indians really communicate with animals more than, than what white people do. White people separated themselves from the animals because they thought they were so superior to them. Indians lived with them and communicated with them, still like Adam did in the garden. They used them for food, all right, but they communicated with them. I think I have trained everything that swims and crawls and flies in my life, just about. My chickens. They're my partners. They're not food. They know they're not food. I don't eat my dogs. <laughs> and uh, fish. I've had two or three pet fish in my life. I had a great big Oscar. I called Oscar. He got about 17 and a half inches long. And he would come in when I'd walk in the house. He'd just go like this in the bowl. They'd see me walk in the house. I'd go over there and I'd hand feed him like this. He'd just be so happy when I'd come in. I had another fish, a uh, goldfish I called Spot. He had a spot right on top of his head. And I'd walk in the house and I had that, that uh, uh, pot, fountain that I've got out the back side of my house with a cowboy, Will Rogers, standing on it with a rope and all this stuff down there was, was uh, Spot. And when I lived over there, when I built that house, I had this in the entranceway of the house. And when I'd walk into the entranceway, Spot would stick half a, his icky's body half out of the water and just swim all around for me to come and say hi to him. And I'd touch him on the head like that. He was so glad to see me. Birds and chickens just follow me all over the place wherever I go. They just follow me around the cats and stuff. I had red-tailed hawk that followed me all over a home ranch when I hunted up there, following me around, showing me where the deer were. <laughs> I told one of that, that Greek guy, I took Fody, I said, watch that red tail. Oh, he said, you're crazy. I took him up about three different times that we got deer, and he said, where's the hawk? <laughs> what's he telling you today? You know, what's he telling you today? We can communicate with those animals, but it's never like it was before, is it? It's never going to be like it was before. When all the animals communicated with mankind, because now we have a pre we're predators, we're the top predator. I can't remember what year it was. I used to be a lion and a coon hunter and all that, and I uh, tagged the last mountain lion in the state of California, the last one before the moratorium started. The last hour, the last few minutes. 
it stopped at 12 o'clock noon, and this was when the guy signed the tag. It was 11.58 of that day. He said, this is the last line in the state of California, and he signed it. I've got that tag filled out at home. The only predator that a lion has is what? Mankind. Now they're running all over. They're killing little kids and stuff because there's so many of them. When you walk in the woods, you're not supposed to see a lion. If you see a lion when you walk in the woods, you're a prey. When you see a, a lion when you walk in the woods, you're a prey. Just remember that. They were nocturnal and they were afraid of mankind. But now there's so many of them, they are eating people. This is when all this starts. Everything starts over. So we started from 8. 8. 21. Up to 9. 3. 8. 21 to 9. And verse 3. And we'll start out there. For, do you have any questions? Where we, where we went today. Well, if you have any questions concerning any of this. Yeah, I got one. Uh -huh. Back to the, to the mail of we were talking earlier. That they offered the male animals, yes. Right. So Except for the red heifer offering. Did that have anything to do with the blood? The blood being passed to the male? Next week we will study the the blood a little bit more. No. It simply represented that Christ, the male, the Son of God, was going to die. Okay? But the blood we'll study about. Blood is precious to God and blood is sacred to God. Next week. In verse number three and four, nine, three, and four. All right, uh, Sharon, do you have anything? Have any questions? Well, I guess I was. Well, I was thinking that also this morning. You know, when they're still talking about abstaining from blood. And, and, and yes. The right. Jerusalem Council. Right. Yeah, that representative of churches when the churches. Yeah, the, you know, the blood is the life. The life forces. Yes. And the blood. Mm-hmm. Supposed to still respect because that blood represents the an, the life of the animal, and that only belongs to God only. That is not ours. That blood represents like that tree of knowledge of good and evil in the garden. It's God's. Don't touch it. But we do blood transfusions. Now. That's totally different. Okay. I'm not that has nothing to do with eating blood. That the the Jehovah Witnesses say you eat blood because it used to be feeding you through the veins. When you, when you did the blood, so, oh, now we can't eat people's blood. It's not. They're transferring blood. That's life-giving. Blood represents what? Life. And when you have blood, it's giving you life. Okay? And we, do you, how many people got killed and they drained their blood for that blood to go into us? How many people got killed? Nobody. You take blood from life, people that give you their blood. They're not, you're not eating them. You're not killing them. You're borrowing some of their blood to give you life or to st sustain life. So, so are you eating some dead man's blood? No. They putting any dead man's blood in you? No. All right, that's, that's, and they use that, and that's one of the things. They won't take any drug transfusions, but that's, that's resting scripture tremendously. Floyd, got a question? Brother Abe. No? All right. Let's go out and do something eternal. Let's have a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you. We thank you for your word. Help us to think deeply about the things that you, the beautiful things that you have in your word. The sanctity of life. The gift of life that we have to, to go out while we're here. Help us to do eternal things that in 1 Timothy it says we bring nothing into this world and we can't take anything out of it but we know Father that those things which we do for you follow us forever those are eternal things there's nothing physically that we can take out of this world but we can take those eternal things with us help us to think about that as, as we walk about in our daily life in Jesus name we pray Amen Got another question. <coughs>